Also concerning salvation, we believe that it is only achieved by grace through faith. In other words, it is a gift that God gives us and there's no amount of good works that we can do to earn our way into heaven. And there's no amount of good works that we can do to earn our way into heaven. And there's no amount of good works that we can do to earn our way into heaven. The second word is the word inerrancy. And this is just a fancy theological word that basically means we believe that the original Bible contains no errors. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, if we start entertaining the idea that the Bible has errors in it, what we're basically saying is one of two things. Either A, God did not divinely inspire the writing of the Bible, which means man wrote the Bible, which introduces all sorts of other problems, or that God did inspire the writing of the word, but it contains errors in it, which now introduces the problem that God cannot be trusted at his word. And essential belief number five is monotheism and the Trinity. In other words, the first word simply means that we as Christians believe that there is only one God. We reject the idea that there could be a plurality of gods. The second word is the word Trinity, which basically means that we believe our one God exists eternally in three persons, which means that each person of the Trinity is fully, uniquely God because they all possess the same essence and the same attributes as the other. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you, brethren, you fellow believers, supporters of the truth. Shalom also to the hopefully elect. Peace to the elect. Shalom. So, um, the brother sent me the clip with the uh, the pastor uh, who kisses away. Uh, demons uh, there was you know a brother that follows the faith um, sent me this video clip but I also went into this um, guy Alan I think his name is Alan Parr he has a channel called The Beat he always say um, you know the Christian you know the weird Christian doctrine you know he always pushes that on, on a he's a hardcore Christian so just a couple things he said and the one thing I want to go into when he said, as far as there is no works you can do that can get you into the kingdom of heaven. All you need is faith. And this is purely a Christian doctrine. And this is clearly why our people are messed up. This is clearly why the Kisling pastor is doing what he's doing. And all the things that's going on into these Christian churches. Now, over there in West Africa, over there, they, they're different breed of Christians but you still see the same thing go here but secretly you know yeah molesting daughters you know raping women boys you know you can you name it they're stealing they're a lot of bribery theft cheats cheating all going on in the Christian church why because they have no fear there's no punishment now what they're preaching is the gospel of so-called Jesus, Yahawasha, you know, which Yahawasha came and his whole purpose was for the Israelites to restore and bring back the Israelites, right? And to die for the nation of Israel. That was the whole key, the forgiveness of sins for the Israelites and Israelites only, right? Because we were lost. That's why uh, um, Matthew 10 and 5, he said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But this guy says, you ain't got to do nothing. All you got to do is believe. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's kind of crazy. That's like a, telling a child saying, I ain't got to clean up the room. I ain't got to do a damn thing because all I got to do is believe that you're my parents. Doesn't make sense. So anyway, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and we're going to go into it. Maybe the Trinity a little bit. I don't understand that Trinity at all. I don't understand how 
um, as vocab say, the Holy Spirit is a special man. There's three men. And the Holy Spirit came down and has, this is what they teach, had sex with Mary. So the, the special man came down, had sex with Mary, committed adultery on Joseph to have sex with his wife just to bring back himself as the other person. Never understood that weird doctrine. Uh, but anyway, Psalms 81 and 9. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. And this is what they're doing. That Cesar Borgias, you know, that's all a strange God. You know, it talks about a, a Bible. Um, the Bible was not, is, is not um, corrupt, right? But you had people who, the original, but then you had people who make these translations and they got these errors. They universalized it, but you got to go into the, the text and have the, the true understanding, right? And especially with a lot of their Bibles, you know? But for the most part, most of the Bibles say the same thing. And when you deal with the Latin that was infused into the Bible, that's when it came confusing. Like the word Gentile, and you start using words that spelled the same but had different meanings, like stranger. And uh, Moses said he was a stranger, you know. He named his son Gershom, who was a stranger. That's, you know, and this is where you got to go get the understanding. In fact, I'm going to get an example of, uh, of that stranger. Uh, we're going to go into Leviticus. showing you that a stranger uh, can be an Israelite, just like a Gentile can be an Israelite. First uh, Corinthians 12. Or is it Second Corinthians 12 and 1 and 2? You know, you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols. So we go to Leviticus 19, um, and I think it's 24. Uh, it would be 34. Uh, 34, it says, But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. Right? So this is clear that um, we were strangers as well. And remember, you had some of us adopted the Egyptian philosophy. You know? It's not the first, you know, this this has happened over generations, even up to the day. So I just wanted to touch on that. Let's go to James 2 and 20, 21. Um, let me go to 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou do, do as well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our, our father justified by the works when he had offered Isaac? See, that that was the works. He, he was making a sacrifice. And we have to make a sacrifice. We have to show the works. Right? We have to show the works. You just, it's about faith. We know the law is not going to completely save you, but it's definitely about works that's involved in faith. You just can't go around and say, yeah, I have faith, Lord. I have faith. And you're doing nothing. You know, that's the weird stuff, man. That's why our people are destroyed. Because when you think like that, you're thinking of following other gods. That's the mindset of like the queen of heaven, but even in the queen of heaven, on the left hand side, they was shewing works. You know, so you how much more with the heavenly father? That's crazy, man. You ain't got to work. <laughs> That's a lazy Christian, man. That's a lazy uh, faith. A lazy, let me say, a lazy belief. Um, Seest thou no faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. Right? And the scripture was fulfilled with which saith Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of Yahweh. Right? So there's no doubt about it. You must have works. 
Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Right? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messenger, messengers, you know, the spies, and sent them out another way. So, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. See, this is why those Christians never really want to come up to us. They never really want to, you know, they'll try. And then when they do come up to us, they jot down what they learn from us. Then they spin it and they'll make another doctrine out of it. Right? So, do these people really believe? Let's go to James 2. No, not James. I, I just was in James. Let's go to Romans 3. This is called Justified by Faith. I think I'm going to try to just get to the point. It's a good bit of this. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. Talking about the Israelites. Being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shah, whom Yahweh have set forth to the propitiation of the video on this from them Christians through the faith in his blood to declare the righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the, through the forbearance of Yahweh. See, everybody don't understand the Heavenly Father, man. They have no clue. They don't understand Psalms 47 and 2 says he's a, uh, a, a terrible king, a feared king. Right? For the things we've done in the past, we shouldn't even be here. But Yahweh has come to make that sacrifice. It says, to declare, I say at this time that righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh Shah. Where is boasting then? Is ex excluded by the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. There we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Right, I'm going to get to 30. Um, seeing is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and circumcision through faith. Do we then void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So, I mean, I don't know if these people even read the Bible. It's, it's a curriculum that, um, that's kind of like put on them. Right? They're, they're like, like 2 Peter 3 says that they will walk after their own lust. And that's, um, that's pretty much... That's pretty much what we see. You know, you see the pastors kick, kissing wives and all this stuff. You know, you don't have to do any works to go to heaven. They believe in the Trinity. Let's double that up with one scripture that'll kind of go twofold on this. Mark 12 and 29. It says, 28, And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that, he had answered them well, asking him, which is the first commandment of all? And Yahweh answered them, the first commandment is, here uh, is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, our power is one Lord. So, wait a minute. Where did they get this? He's three. <laughs> ah, he's one Lord. He's always said it in the scripture. You know, there's no other God beside me. Right? So, that clearly separates him from every anything and everybody or everything beside him, man. He's on the upper upper tier, the highest level, the most high. You know, this is crazy that you think that. And since this is the case, it says, let me read on. And thou show it says, and Yahweh shall answer him, the first commandment is Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So you would think that these guys will be trying to push the first commandment. How do you love the Lord with all your heart and soul and strength if you're just sitting on the side doing nothing? You don't want to follow none of the commandments. You don't want to follow any of the laws. 
and then sin is the transgression of the law. So you say this, the laws is thrown away with, done away with, thrown out. No wonder nobody does well in those Christian churches. No wonder nobody fears the Lord. You know, it's the madness and the sickness of these Christi of Christianity. Anyway, uh, that's all I have on that. Shalom.